you close restaurants because you are talking about opening the economy. You close the restaurants and you open churches. What is the contribution of the church into the economy? The restaurants, by the way, practice social distancing, even without COVID-19. You come with whoever you came with, the, you shall occupy this table. There will be spacing in between. It doesn't matter whether there is a queue outside. The restaurant will never allow strangers to come and occupy the table with the people who are not known to them. But those people that have been practicing social distancing, they, are, they, they must be closed. But also, in the restaurants, hygiene is number one. Because it's compulsory. You cannot run a restaurant without practicing high hygiene, high levels of hygiene. Now, not only that, there are inspectors hired by municipalities without COVID-19 to inspect the compliance of restaurants in practices. That's a place that is highly regulated. You close it and still say, no, we, we are opening the economy. I want to really make a plea to religious leaders. Do not open your places. People, you claim to occupy the high moral standard. You are the ones who should be saying your members should not come to church. We pray in the EFF, we support church. Members of the EFF, supporters of the EFF, do not go to church. It's a trap. You are going to die. It's a setup. Do not go to church. What a, look at what the church did in Bloemfontein. We have evidence what, of what the church can do. Leave those things of who's going to select who and all of that. We're not interested in that. Do not go to church. We call upon the caring leaders of religion not to connive with white Our people can still pray at home. Our leaders can still reach out to our people through different methods. Be it a, a, a message, be it a recorded message, a recorded video, be it a YouTube live, Facebook live, it doesn't matter. One of the pastors was even saying, people can come to church and sit in the cars, and then he will preach, they will hear him from the cars. If, you, they, if they can hear you from the car, then they can hear you from home. Why do you risk their lives? Why do you want them on the streets? Do not take your children to school until these people have complied with the health, safety, health and safety standards in schools. We all know that there are no toilets in public schools, particularly of black African people. There are no, there are no toilets. Even those buildings that you see and refer to them as toilets, those toilets are not functioning. Let's go now. Let NG now choose any school of there are no toilets. The children at school, those of you who have gone to school, you will know, we drink water from the tap. We lean, kneel there and we go down there and drink water. The other one comes after you, we queue, drink water. Our children cannot wear the mask. 
We all want to comply. We carry these things. But these things are suffocating us. <laughs> and the only way not to wear this thing is you must stay at home. So why should we be told, told mask, wear mask, wear, wear mask to wear? Instead of preaching wearing mask, we must preach stay at home. Then mask will not be necessary. These things, I've tried them with all my boys. I, they don't last. So imagine when we're not there. And the story that children are going to be safe inside the school there. Let's take that argument for a second. But when they come to school, the teacher is not there. They are working together. Our children walk. Only people who don't know the situation of our children will talk this nonsense they are talking. They don't meet at the schoolyard. They meet on the road to school. Already they've infected each other. They meet in a congested taxi, congested bus. Already before they arrive at school. After infecting each other, they are told to separate. They've already infected each other. What is the purpose of separating them at school? We are led by fools, non-thinkers, people who are sitting on top of their brains. The only thing we can do, like we did during apartheid, we must refuse to comply and stay at home. We must engage in a stay away. Let, if this white economy collapses, let it collapse. If we are going to die of hunger, let us die with our boots on than kneeling down protecting the white monopoly economy. Yes. If we are going to be killed by the disease, let the disease kill us with our boots on at home, protecting ourselves, not surrendering to go and protect a white-owned economy. Yes. It's not our economy. If death comes, let death come. But we must die proud that we defied to protect the white economy. No my brothers and sisters, sometimes you also embarrass us in a big way. White people want alcohol to open because they want to make profit. You celebrate the opening of alcohol because you want to drink and drown in sorrows. You know, people were hooting. There were fireworks from people who are celebrating alcohol. And people who are celebrating alcohol on Twitter. Some of them, if you scroll down to when the lockdown started, they were tweeting and asking for money for electricity, asking for food parcels, saying to us that uh, the ANC is di discriminating us against food parcel. Now alcohol is announced. The same person is celebrating who announced that he doesn't have money for food. He's celebrating alcohol. Some of this stupidity must not be tolerated. You must start acting responsibly. There is nothing good about alcohol. Alcohol is destructive. Alcohol destroys families. Alcohol destroys life. Alcohol contributes to unprotected sex and spreading of diseases. That's what you are celebrating. Alcohol contributes to violence children and women. The whole activist who said we stand against this and that, you come and celebrate the sale of alcohol. It was the youth of 1976, who went around closing bottle stores, destroying alcohol that they found in homes and saying to the elders who are dying out there, you are indulging in alcohol instead of coming to fight for our freedom. This alcohol contributed to the delay of our freedom because people found comfort in alcohol. We don't need alcohol, we need land.
For more, go to ewn.co.za.